right? Um, you would probably want to do file make a copy if you are file make a copy. Once you fill it all out, you would probably want to make a copy of it so that when you go through and grade it, you can use it again for the next time that you make your um, rubric gradings. And so kind of things to notice that I have on here is I have a place for you to put the student name. You're actually going to leave that blank on this first tab because this first tab is rubric and it is the template. And then you'll notice I have these student, student 2, student 3, student 4. I have these other tabs that allow you to grade the individual students. So this first one is just your template. And so when you go through there and um, you can change these percentages here. So I have a 4 it being 100% and then a 3 an average being 85%. Uh, but maybe you want that to be 80%. So you can just write right over top of it and maybe you want a 2 to be 70% instead of 75. So you can actually change the percentages that you want each of the categories to weight at. And then over here you'll notice that automatically all of the criteria weights equally. So you can actually override those. So you can say criteria 1 is only 1% while criteria 2 is 30%. So I can go ahead and change those so they're not weighted equally. The thing that you'll notice though is that it it's going to add up for you what the percentages all add up to. So once you start messing with it, you do want to make sure that your percentages for your criteria do add up to 100%. So I have actually, if I double click on this, you'll see I have a formula. So I would probably rewrite all of them if you rewrite one of them just to make sure that all of your categories add up to 100%. It doesn't add up to 100%, which is why my top score is 87 and so the other thing I like to have is I like to give students full credit uh, by default and then I only have to go in and on the criteria they didn't get the excellent full credit mark on I would just have to change that so things to kind of notice is if I add a criteria 8 that all of the averages are rebalanced and I'll add a criteria 9 and again you can see that if I was weighting them equally, it would automatically rebalance them. So then when you look in here, I also have a formula. When I double click on this, you can see my formula for creating these center boxes. But that's just to help you to get some help text. You can actually just type right on top of it. So um, turned work in before the due date. My criteria maybe was responsibility. Responsibility, I can spell. Um, turned work in on the due date. One day late, more than one day late. So I just type right on top of it. You just want to replace all of the descriptions. If there's too many categories, instead of deleting, don't delete them because it'll mess up some of the formulas. Um, so like I right click and I delete, I can delete. Don't don't delete the rows. Don't do it that way. Just highlight it and then just hit the delete on your keyboard just to clear them out. So the rows are still there, but the content in the rows have been deleted. You'll notice when I did that, that automatically my criteria weights were rebalanced. Right now they only add up to 76%. So maybe I make this 40% and this would be, well, I guess that would be 0%. If I leave that as 1, then I'll do that as 39 Okay, there. So now they all add up to 100%, which is what I would want. And so now when I go look at the student pages, you'll notice that my criteria weights uh, match and the percentages for each category, uh, excuse me, each rubric score matches. And what I typed into the description boxes matches. So then all I have to do is I'm going to grade Mary Smith. I just say, okay, she got a 3 on that category and a 1 on that category, and I can see right away that her grade is an 85. And then I just move to the next student, Joe Cougar, and I get say he got a 3 on all of these categories, and so then I know his grade is an 80%.